We now move on to the two keynote addresses of the day. The topic of our first keynote address for this morning is Middle East petrochemical industry, a vision integrating the entire value chain. The Middle East has the opportunity to build on its past successes and create a world-leading chemical industry that can play a central role in meeting growing global demand for chemicals. Our first keynote speaker for today will outline the roadmap for the Middle East petrochemical industry. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Khaled Al Falah, President and CEO of Saudi Aramco. Thank you, Nadine. Is my mic on? Thank you, Nadine. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وأسعد الله صباحكم جميعا. Your Highness Prince Saud bin Abdullah, Your Excellencies, the Ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to each and every one of you. It's a pleasure for me to be back here at Gibka, four years after my last address to. Uh, this group uh, referred to already as the flagship of our uh, already strong and growing petrochemical industry here in the Gulf. When I was last here, I called this a golden decade for our region and called for both greater integration and diversification and more intensive efforts in research uh, and development. And since then, of course, we've had a number of achievements by you, the industry, which deserve a lot of pride by yourselves and your colleagues and your respective organizations. That said, however, overall regional development has focused on the manufacturing of commodities for export by leveraging our strong feedstock advantage, our economies of scale, and extensive industrial infrastructure. We have tended to grow horizontally rather than through vertical integration. And while primary petrochemical capacity has grown admirably, the strengthening of functional capabilities had tended to lag. To date, our advantages have carried us through. But the existing model, in my opinion, will not realize our full potential because, as already mentioned by the keynote speaker, the global industry landscape is changing rapidly and creating stronger competition around the world. On the back of growing volumes of unconventional oil and gas, North American chemicals and plastics production will virtually double over the next decade, with a substantial increase in exports to markets that we have over the years assumed were ours for the taking. The European petrochemical industry is closing less efficient plants, integrating assets into cross-regional networks, and altering its product portfolio. To the east in Asia, things are changing as well as Japan rationalizes its petrochemical sector, while China undergoes a relative economic slowdown, places an intensive emphasis on the environment and struggles with existing overcapacity while also pursuing opportunities for coal to chemicals, as already mentioned. Here within the region, at home, we see constrained gas-based feedstocks, while recent crude oil price volatility underscores yet again the value of vertical integration and greater diversification, which provide greater resilience and adaptability. While our efforts are commendable and are already proving their worth, I want to outline four major opportunities where we can do much, much more. First, supplies of ethane, as I mentioned or already, are becoming tighter in our region. But then supplies of alternative feedstocks, such as naphtha and other liquids, are plentiful. And I believe we shouldn't think of these feedstocks 
as mutually exclusive choices, but rather view them as a mixed pool of feedstock that can be used to leverage each other. Liquids are more versatile than pure ethane, and when used in mixed feed crackers, offer a broader product slate, including opportunities to produce specialty chemicals, which in turn can help spawn new industries and consequently many new jobs. Collectively, we need to keep in mind that demand for chemicals is growing at a faster rate than nominal economic growth, the nominal GDP. And, and that not all the new demand can be met with, liquid, with uh, gas light feedstocks. Longer term, I foresee the creation of new groundbreaking technologies to enhance the competitive position of liquids, such as the direct conversion of oil to chemicals. Now, this brings me to the second opportunity, enhancing our region's existing chemical facilities, since applying the mixed feedstock cracker strategy I just mentioned and other enhancements only to future projects will certainly limit their full impact and potential. When considering the massive scale of the region's petrochemical asset base built in the 70s and 80s, it would generate enormous additional value if we pursued opportunities to restructure and upgrade these legacy assets, some of which are fully depreciated and offer limited added value to local economic development and profitability of operating companies in the future. This retrofit would include changes to the feedstock mix, deployment of more energy efficient technologies, and the addition of high value specialty derivatives. But to succeed in specialties, of course, we will need to leapfrog in knowledge intensity and accelerate our innovation engines. The third opportunity is to multiply the number of industry participants and therefore, once again, jobs. Many of our past efforts have focused on large-scale commodity petrochemical projects, which offered the benefits of scale economies, allowed meaningful penetration into export markets, and gained for us a prominent position on the global industry landscape. But there are tremendous advantages in combining the scale of the mega facilities that we have with the high value addition and job creation potential of small and medium enterprises, including the strengthening of an entrepreneurial ecosystem here in the region. So rather than being content with just a handful of major players, the giants of the industry who are with us today, we ought to have thousands, tens of thousands, in fact, of small and mid-sized chemicals companies in the Gulf, just like we find in the US, Europe, Japan, and South Korea. If you look at Europe, for example, the chemical industry directly employs more than a million people in about 30,000 companies, 95 of which are classified as SMEs. All of this will be more easily accomplished if we can grab our fourth opportunity, greater regional integration. As I argued back in 2010, we should think of the entire Gulf as a unified whole rather than as a collection of individual chemical industries walled off from one another. The picture I have in mind of the future GCC is a booming cross-connected region buzzing with chemical-related activity. And while we need to maintain a healthy dose of competition, we should also creatively collaborate at the regional level to create potential synergy and the essential qualitative edge in terms of innovation, education, and technical excellence. At Saudi Aramco, our actions reflect our belief in the continued importance of the downstream. And we want to be as strong a downstream player as we are in the upstream. Over the coming decades, we intend to become a top global refiner and a leading chemicals enterprise. 
This will allow us to capture commercial opportunities and profitable growth while diversifying our business portfolio. And over the next decade, we will invest tens of billions of dollars around the world and at home, of course, all along the value chain. We're already engaged in integrated manufacturing complexes through a series of joint ventures at home and abroad, all of which utilize liquid feedstocks, as I mentioned, and produce a diverse set of value-added derivatives. Our industrial value parks at Petroraba, Jazan Economic City, and next in the Jubair Royal Commission next to Sadara and Satorp, our joint venture with Total, demonstrate our commitment to integrated downstream conversion, value addition, and the use of petrochemicals to spur new industries and create investment opportunities for our customers. Saudi Aramco is also providing startup SMEs, including companies devoted to cutting edge research and innovative products with both capital and corporate sponsorship through our Wa'ad and SAVE entrepreneurship and venture capital initiatives. And we're expanding our R&D spending and research manpower while employing an open network model to make the most of in-house R&D centers, satellite research centers in the kingdom and around the world, and strategic alliances with leading universities and research institutions like KAUST, the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, and the Dahran Techno Valley at the King Fahad University of Petroleum and Minerals next to our own campus. Together, these investments, initiatives, and programs are transforming Saudi Aramco. But that transformation is taking place alongside a major demographic shift in the region. And we're also embracing that shift at Aramco and the tremendous opportunities it represents. As the region experiences a youth bulge of unprecedented proportions, an entirely new generation of men and women is sweeping through Saudi Aramco as well. As a result, by the end of the decade, some 60% of our workforce will be 35 years or younger. So this morning, in the next few minutes, I would like to share with you some thoughts on this incredible transformation, which many other firms, I am sure, across the Gulf are also experiencing. First of all, our approach begins with the realization that these young people are a different breed than previous generations, certainly than mine. Most of my colleagues and I started our careers content with a narrowly defined job, working a shift at a plant or in a cubicle at the office. But today, young people have what I call a positive rebelliousness, hardwired into their worldview. They think less along the lines of organizational hierarchies and more in entrepreneurial terms and see creative disruption as a way to produce something new and better. They have an appetite for risk. They thrive on rapid change and constant mobility. And many are simul simultaneously more skeptical and more hopeful than any generation, than my generation was at their age. And while they are driven to better themselves, they are equally convinced they can do that while making a difference for their community and the company they work for. They think laterally and multidimensionally and want to tackle challenges and explore the possibilities for improvement in whatever they do. It's also a generation that grew up with a baby bottle in one hand and an electronic device in the other. They are therefore a hyper-connected generation whose lives are lived on social media and not just in their own social circles. So for many of them, a cubicle in the office isn't just small or impersonal, it's irrelevant. Somewhere to recharge your smartphone or iPad rather than to start your career. But that difference worldview is one reason we view their potential contributions to our company 
as our most prized future opportunity and why we take connecting with this new generation and directing their energies so seriously at Saudi Aramco. We, of course, we at Saudi Aramco enjoy a proud heritage, but we also recognize that our corporate culture must evolve with the times. And we have a number of initiatives to reinvigorate our corporate systems, streamline our processes while engaging this generation of young talent. First of all, we invest heavily in skill development through our college and advanced degree programs. We have over 2,000 Aramco-sponsored uh, young people pursuing uh, education. We have the three-year on-the-job professional development program and other development and onboarding initiatives. Our veterans, experienced employees within Saudi Aramco, have embraced the mentorship of this new generation with enthusiasm because they see the enormous potential of this young generation. Our younger employees, on the other hand, are stretching themselves and at times their organizations as they want to set higher benchmarks and goals for themselves than their predecessors and supervisors. We at the leadership team of Saudi Aramco want our newest Aramcons to be fully engaged in that evolving corporate ecosystem that we are developing. So that even as we get these young people ready for the company, we're also getting the company ready for them. We are allowing their perspectives to shape Saudi Aramco and to make our company better, stronger, and more agile. For example, we want to leverage their entrepreneurship spirit, encourage them to employ their creativity towards organizational effectiveness, and utilize their love of technology to better connect across organizational and functional lines, transcending professional disciplines. In my view, because they have grown up multitasking and want their organizations to do the same, they are best qualified to make a large corporation be just as agile and entrepreneurship as a startup. To maximize these benefits, we have created systems and structures to channel the inputs and harness the incredible energy of these young people. Individual company organizations have their own specially tailored programs, but at a corporate level, the best example is our Youth Leadership Advisory Board nicknamed as YLAB. This is a group of 16 young employees who during their 18 month term conduct studies on topics of significant importance, both to the company and to young people. They provide advice to management, ideas and insights, and engage other young people in the changes taking place throughout Saudi Aramco. We are now in our third YLAB cycle and it has become a self-sustaining program that is both highly competitive and highly respected within the company. Mini Y Labs are taken root at various levels and locations within company organizations and professional societies. In fact, we've even seen young people create their own self-directed youth-only groups to tackle issues of importance to them. The participants gain a good deal of insight, experience, and maturity during their experience with the Y Labs. But we, as leaders, also gain even greater insight from listening to these young men and women throughout Saudi Aramco. Likewise, I see youth as one of the Gulf chemical industry's biggest sources of competitive advantage. And many of the traits we see in these young people a fear for entrepreneurship, a passion for technology, a desire to connect and collaborate, and a daring drive for growth and development are the characteristics, the very characteristics we need in our regional business. That's because just like in our incredibly talented youth, I see substantial untapped potential in the Gulf chemical space. We have multiple advantages such as large and diversified pool of gas and liquids feedstock, world-scale assets, modern infrastructure, a globally competitive workforce, 
an ideal ge geographic location to export east and west and supportive government policies. This will be further bolstered by a growing degree of both vertical and regional integration, as well as enormous opportunities to advance in innovation. As the global leader in petroleum, our region should be among the foremost players in petrochemicals and specialty chemicals as well. So ladies and gentlemen, four years on from my last visit here, I remain convinced that this is indeed a pivotal decade, indeed a golden decade for the Gulf and chemical sector, and that we are in the midst of a once in a generation opportunity for a true transformation. So let us seize this, this opportunity and make the most of our enviable competitive position of considerable resources and our wealth of young talent. Thank you for your attention this morning and let me wish each and every one of you a very successful conference.